Hello, everybody. It's Stefan from A Comedy Advice Podcast. How are you all doing? It's Memorial Day here in this realm, in this time continuum. I hope you guys either had a good one or have a good one. I'm not sure which past, present, or future state you might be in, but I am in the state of joy right now because I just finished this amazing episode with Ashley Rose, comedian extraordinaire. She also has a show every month at the House of Comedy in Phoenix. Link will be in the show notes to grab and nab those ticks. So get them, get those tickies while they're hot and go see that show. Ashley is an extraordinary comedian. I think I already said that, but it warrants being said to a... So I'll say that. And then if you guys want more Ash, more Ashley, uh, go on over in in the show notes. There's a link to follow her on Instagram. Give her some love. Show her some support. Slide in those DMs. Tell her hello. Say hello, and I enjoyed the episode. That's it. I don't want anything unsavory from you, ACAP folks, because we are better than that. We don't send unsavory and salacious things, okay? That's right. I don't know why I'm acting like your dad now, but you'll get a timeout if you send a bad DM. Well, other than that, send me, you know what? Send all the bad DMs to me. Just send all of that stuff my way because I love attention and I love your love or hate, whatever it is. Emotions are my food. So I can munch on that ire. I can munch on the joy. I can munch on all of your heartstrings that you guys send to me. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. And just wanted to give a quick shout out to y'all. Y'all are amazing. I love you guys. Just think about that. Think about me while you're listening to this episode or any other podcast. Think about me, okay? And tell me, DM me and be like, I was listening to Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard and I was thinking about you the whole time, Steph. And that will make me, you know, not that happy because you're not listening to my podcast, but it'll, in a sense, make me happy. So that's all. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Here it is. Do I have it? Is it close enough? Yeah, you got it. Is that annoying? I think that's good. Is that angle for you? No. No? Okay. It's a good angle for me. All right. Now I feel like now I feel self-conscious about mine. Is this good? Yeah, this is good. It's kind of a weird angle now that I put it here. I just want to make sure I'm close enough. If I want to do some ASMR. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to a comedy advice podcast. Podcast, podcast, podcast. <laughs> I never understood ASMR. Like, when did that start? Who was the first person that... Isn't that a weird thing? Yeah. Because wasn't it... Um, is it somebody just speaking very quietly? Or did they do other things like chew and eat foods? I think that's a form of ASMR. Okay. I think What is that called? Mukbang? Mukbang? I think... That's it's, what it's called? I think. Wh- oh, okay. Because th- I've seen mukbang videos. That sounds so sexual to me. But like... Isn't it they, weird? They eat... They food eat. yeah from... and they're using these microphones that are really sensitive to pick up every little mouth sound and like i feel like that's so split right down the middle people are either loving that or repulsed by a mouth sound yeah i'm repulsed i'm in the latter group i mean I'm. what are your of, feelings I, listen i always thought i hated mouth sounds but once you start watching these videos you're like oh all right Let's oh. see how this crab leg goes down. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, I don't know what it is about it that draws you in, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it just does a little bit. It's hypnotizing. Hypnotizing, yeah. And then the ASMR stuff I thought was so weird, but I've caught myself watching some of those too. And apparently, you're supposed to get this tingly feeling on your head and on your, I don't know, like where on your body. But so a lot of people feel a tingle on their head when they listen to ASMR. And I've experienced it like a couple times on a few different videos, but I don't watch it very often. But, huh. you know, sometimes you'll be scrolling and stuff like that comes up and you just stop and what is this weirdness? And then you end up being drawn in. Yes. That's ASMR. Okay. But they're, for me. But a lot of people swear by it to go to sleep and to relax. That's pretty interesting. Uh, if you, Alexa, play ASMR. Play mukbang classics well i feel like if you're just playing it and not watching it you, you're gonna attract some weird attention from your neighbors maybe that know. would be pretty weird three in the morning <laughs> they're just hearing slurping of <laughs> <laughs> i feel like mukbang is not the right word for it it sounds is that a japanese word i was wondering that too actually when you were just saying that um 
I have no idea where that originates from. Mm, okay. Maybe so. I mean, I should have probably done a little research before. I would call it up. something like Cruncherino or something. Yeah. You want to do a yeah. little crunch, like uh, mastication. Mastication. Because that's what it is. That's really what it is. Perverts. And there's... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if all of my audience knows what masticating is, but you know what? That's fine. That's Speaking fine. of audience, yeah. hello, audience, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Steph Zatani. Join me today, very special guest, hilarious comedian right here in the Valley, Ashley Rose. Oh, that is nice of you. Oh. I feel like a nobody now. You've had some incredible guests on lately. I can't even believe I still have a spot over here. Oh my God. You always have a spot. Thank and you, you were one of the first guests that I ever had. And Thank it you was for that. it was fun. It I was remember phenomenal. that day. Yes. Yeah. And I got a lot of good feedback too. Oh, good. They were like, she should do the podcast instead of you. And I was like, oh, okay. Did well, they say that? Good feedback. Yeah, That's they did great. say that. So you. if you, if I can just hand over the reins and then you can take it over. Yeah, yeah. Now. I can't do any of that stuff on the computer. But, you know. <laughs> I can do that. I'll just be behind the scenes and then it can be the Ashley I show. Work that out. <laughs> I can work that out. But you, ha you also have another show, Not So Black and White, with yeah. Tara Shakespeare. Yep. That's a podcast, but it's also live at the House of Comedy. Yeah. So we, that show started as a podcast. Okay. Tara and I were podcasting out of a wine bar in downtown Phoenix, a really cool um, wine nice. bar. It's still there. Rotten Grapes is the name of it. I love that spot. Nice. Um, and then we had really good momentum, but then COVID happened. Uh, and everything, you remember when everything closed down and nothing was open. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, the wine bar closed for COVID along with all the other restaurants and bars in town. And um, around that time, uh, we got offered um, the opportunity to run our own show at House of Comedy. Dang. And so, you know, we both loved the idea and kind of just turned the podcast into a show. Um, nice. so we aren't really like producing a podcast anymore, but we are producing a monthly show at house of comedy and sticking with the not so black and white theme, really keeping the lineup very diverse every night. Yeah. Very Yeah. Cool. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. I am very curious and I'm also apparently very lazy because I haven't come out and seen a show yet, but I need to, and the link's going to be in the show notes for everybody to go see the show in the Phoenix area. But I wanted to ask what was the transformation like when you guys were thinking, okay, we're going to do a live show. We're going to switch it up. Mm -hmm. Is it you guys um, as the hosts bringing on guests mm -hmm. or, or comics that are doing sets? Is it very heavily stand-up focused? How has the structure changed? So when we our first show, we were trying to take some of the things that we were doing on the podcast mm -hmm. and do them on stage. So Tara and I would have a segment called Wine About It where we would drink yes. wine and bitch about something. And then, yeah. you know, we would try to do kind of the same thing or um, oh, what were some other things where Tara would teach me some of the words that she uses in her culture. <laughs> and then I would teach her some of the stuff in mine. Um, and then try to get each other to use them in a sentence. So we were doing like these nice. segments where we were making our um, comics who came on the show to perform participate yeah. in these games oh, with us nice. at the end of the show. That ended up being kind of um, clunky on okay. a show format. Uh, it was fun, but I didn't love the flow. So the show has evolved with each show. We've tried to do something different to make our show stand out from the other shows mm. that are produced nice. there. Nice. So we don't really do that anymore. So now it's a very traditional stand-up show. Tara and I come out and we open the show with like eight or 10 minutes and we kind of banter back and forth a little bit like we would do on the podcast. And then we bring out our first comic and then go back and forth uh, introducing the next comic in the lineup. And uh, yeah. we just recently brought on a DJ to the show who he kind of interacts with the comics now too, we plays sound ah. effects. He has his own microphone. He'll chime in maybe. I don't want to say heckle, but maybe a little bit. <laughs> so it's fun. It's actually really fun. It's kind of something different than what the other shows offer. And and he plays really good music before and after the show. So it's fun. Oh, very yeah, cool. So that's where we're at now. I was going to, I was thinking about that. A DJ that's interjecting in the middle of sets. Is that, I can imagine it's hard for the the comic yeah. to kind of focus, <laughs> which is funny. Yeah, I think. I think it's funny. And challenging, mm -hmm. I think, too, because you have to be ready for all scenarios, yeah. all places. And there's so many just different distractions that happen when right. you're doing stand up. So that's kind of like a good 
training ground, if you will. It is. I mean, he's not there to try to see you fail. (laughs) He's trying to enhance your set and he doesn't interrupt too much. Um, It's usually like little sound effects or one or two word things. Oh, nice. So it's not terrible, but um, we've done it. We've had a few shows with him now and the audience loves it. The the managers over at House Comedy love it. And I would say like most of the comics love it. (laughs) (laughs) And a few of them were like, "Uh, no, thank you. So we have just uh made it an option oh, for okay. the comics like if you don't want the interaction you can let them know you don't want the interaction if you're cool with it just let them go but uh yeah be- you know if someone's like filming or they want to like record their set for whatever it maybe isn't helpful to have someone playing a sound effect during but i yeah. i like it when he does that when we're up there and it, it adds a little something that's fun it adds a fun element the audience really seems to respond to it well oh that's cool yeah that's really and cool. at the end of the day comics we're here to perform for the audience so that's, we're doing it for them that's right that's yeah right. yeah oh that's awesome and so do you anticipate any further changes do you guys have any other plans of not at the moment this is our most recent update and we'll probably ride this out for a little while see okay. see what happens with it very cool. We have we have a great audience every show and a lot of repeat people coming out every month. Nice. So that's really good. We've been bringing out of state headliners for most of the shows. Very cool. So diversifying the lineup a little bit. So when locals are coming out, they're not seeing the same comics all the time. We're bringing people from all over. Very cool. Yeah. Stepping back a little bit because I, I love the DJ idea. Yeah. And the songs that come on, I was curious about how does one choose the song that they come on to or is that chosen for them is that that's a good question um we have a group chat for okay. every show and okay. we put the dj in the group chat and we tell the the comics who are booked let the dj know the song that you want oh, okay. and just recently um you remember, oh, I, people are going to be so mad at me, but the guy who <laughs> passed away from Digital Underground, what was his name, who sang the Humpty Dance song? Do you remember? Oh, I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I can't know. remember his name. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, I... it, but so someone had chosen a song that they wanted to walk out to, but then changed their mind later when that guy passed away and wanted to do a tribute to him. So oh. there's really no rhyme or reason to it. Some people have like their song right. that they always want to come out to. I will choose sometimes whatever song is stuck in my head at that moment for no other reason than oh, I like okay. that beat. I like that. Beat. <laughs> like, no, it's not personal. It doesn't mean anything to me. It's just right. like, I want to hear that one, you know? <laughs> and sometimes I'll say, I don't care. You pick like, okay. I don't even feel like thinking about it, but it's funny because some comics are very passionate about their yeah. song choice and others just don't care. And it's, <laughs> so there is no really real rhyme or reason to that i see there's no protocol for like i don't think so it's like you become a jedi you get a lightsaber you become a comic you get one song one song What's you can your change song? them up okay yeah. has there been a, a song that you have had bring you up that you thought you know what that wasn't the greatest or have you had a oh, song you're like sure. this energy hits yeah i mean sometimes it depends who's running the sound booth that night but there's been songs like what are you doing <laughs> does that even look like it matches me like like just so far off, like really hard rock, like metal or something. I'm like, <laughs> metal. Why would you do that? I don't know if they panic and they're like, oh, and they just push whatever button and like, <laughs> we're gonna go metal. They're gonna. Oh god, what? What's the goofiest song you've ever? Oh heard? Oh my gosh, like I don't even anyone. remember. Like probably some like eighty or ninety hair band or something. <laughs> I don't even know. But so I've I've definitely walked up there and been like, what the hell was that? Like roast the sound guy for just a second. Nice. I mean, it happens all the time. Or there'll be people who are clearly hip hop people, and they'll get like some country music song, brand, and they'll get up there and be like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> And I guess that's why you got to choose, because if you don't choose, the sound guy chooses for you, and it could be a real dud. Oh man, real doozy. Oh man, <laughs> just one more thing to think about. I just, I, I have not thought about, and I, I've performed stand up a couple times, and I can't remember the song that was played for me any of the I times. Remember. I never remember. I guess that's not really what you're thinking about when you're getting ready to go up. You're thinking about okay, got to get that first laugh, and then remember all the bits. Yeah, to my I don't set. 
I think some people feel like, you know, it's like a rocky moment on the steps, like right. like the they need the build up, like that pump up to get up on stage and feel themselves or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't. I'm just like, don't trip, don't trip, don't trip, don't trip. That's what I think. That's what I <laughs> Yes, yes, I agree with that. I have these long, lanky legs. So tripping is quite frequent. Um, Oftentimes there's stairs getting up to a stage and I'm always like, watch your toes, watch your toes. Usually people are doing little dances as they go up. I'm no. like one step, two step. All right, here we go. Here we go. It's dark and there's stairs and everyone's looking. <laughs> crawling up to make sure that I don't slip. Oh my gosh. Now that I've said that, the next show I'm definitely going to biff it. Oh no. Uh, it's going to happen. That's Murphy's Law. Oh my gosh. Well, um, I hope there's some padding. No, they're usually pretty hard. Yeah, no, it's... Those surfaces. I'm going to have to work on what I'm going to say to recover from that. You can work on your role, so you can have a badass yeah, tuck and roll. I meant to do that. That was part <laughs> oh of the God. act. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, I feel like I'm ready to give some really good advice. Yeah. This is a comedy advice podcast after all. So yeah. we're going to get into it. Let's Before it. we give some advice, I like to get centered with an inspirational quote. I love it. So I usually like to ask my guests, I can't remember, it's been so many, it was episode 103 that you were on. It's episode 247. Oh my gosh. Right now. So it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a hot, hot minute, a hot Arizona minute. But, which is really hot. Yeah, which is insanely hot. It's the <laughs> hottest of minutes. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I usually like to ask my guests now if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through their days or helps motivate them when they're not feeling motivated. Oh, it's wow. That, that little pump-up song before the set. Do you Are you a quote gal? I actually love quotes. Okay. My Pinterest is like 99% quotes. <laughs> And 1% recipes that I'll never make. <laughs> and, but I don't know that they're like super motivational. It's just like when you get pissed off, I'll go find quotes to match my mood in that moment. Oh, it's I like, like that. free therapy. A I like bit. that. So I don't know if they're like motivational, but there's, oh God, there's so many of them. I'm trying to think of like a really good one. It's like, I, I, I do like that though. It's like a la carte therapy because you're diving through the quotes and you're like, this one speaks to me. Yeah. This one is it. Post and then bang. Yeah. Yeah. When you're I trying to that. like send a message to somebody really passive aggressive when you're angry, you know, and you just put that post on <laughs> and then you're like, if the shoe fits <laughs> and then just leave it. Bitch. And, and then, then like, tw you know, however, 10, 20 people are like, was that about me? <laughs> yeah. Sliding in the DMs. I'm so sorry. I don't know what I did wrong. I like that. Yeah. That's, that's power right there. I think so. That's how I use quotes. It's totally the wrong way. <laughs> to inspire people to speak to me. That's, that's, oh. you're an inspiration, actually. Oh, thank you. Because you're like, you make people think about their actions. I do. I like yeah. That. Um, I think what, so one of my favorite ones that I've posted again and again is like, I think it, I think it's something like this. Yeah. It's not the lie that bothers me. It's the insult to my intelligence I find offensive. Oh, damn. Right. Did, was that found on Pinterest? It yeah, that's, sounds... a pin, that's Pinterest all day. I'm trying to imagine who would have said that quote. An angry woman. Buddha? Oh, yes, probably. Oh, Buddha for Are they sure. the same? <laughs> An angry that's person. the same. I mean, I don't really know if there's a difference. <laughs> I like that quote. I think I'm going to post that today. Do it. I'm going to post it. You know and what? just see who's like, is that about me? And it's like about nobody, but just see who responds to it. And there's a guilty conscience in them that they incriminate themselves. You see what you've done? Oh, my God. I this love that. This is a head that. game I really enjoy. It's like <laughs> to catch a predator. It's like to or to catch a mal-mannered person. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'm nice and inspired, but we've got this inspirational quote that I have drummed up from the source, not Pinterest, not Buddha, not an angry woman, an angry robot, perhaps. It's called Inspire Robot, and it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman and mash them together for an inspirational quote. All right. Did I have this segment when you, you were on did. this time? You absolutely had this. Ooh, okay. Do you think it's just as bad as before or? No, this is great. Oh, okay. Great good, then. good, good. So this week's quote is, <clears throat> if we give up our capability to get upset about our hearts and minds, we also give up our capability to interfere with public transportation. Okay. <laughs> 
You might need to let that marinate for a minute. Yeah, I think we let that soak in. If we give up our capability to get upset about our hearts and minds, we also give up our capability to interfere with public transportation. Like a bus. Like a bus. <laughs> like a bus. A train. A train. Plane. Plane. Automobile. Maybe like a taxi. No, Uber. that's not public. That's private, right? Uber, Lyft. Is that not public? Is it private? It's Publicly private traded. Yeah, yeah, private sector. I mean, I think if we give up the capability to get upset about our hearts and minds, mm -hmm. if you're upset and you give up that capability, then you're not going to want to take public transportation. But so yeah. you're not interfering with it. You're like, right. you know what? I'm pissed. I'm going to take the car. Yeah. I'm, I'm pissed because I'm late. But you know what? If you're like, I'm just going to go with the flow. Right. I'm going to help everybody. I'm going to be part of the community. I'm going to take Metro Transit in Phoenix. It's always late or you know, it doesn't pass by my stop. And then I'm going to go with the flow and just be a happy person. Right. And or just be a person. get upset when you get mites on your skin and stuff like that. That's right. Yes. The MTA stands for mites yeah. transportation because uh -huh. it also transports mites. Right. They got to get from place to place. Scabies. What is a mite, by the way? Uh, it's a little tiny bug. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the scientific definition for it. You're welcome. It's <laughs> it's <a> science. <laughs> it's a little tiny bug. It's a little bitty bug. I've never met a mite, but I don't think that I would like to. I don't think you would know because it's so tiny. Oh, man. And maybe I'd be too busy with the capability of my heart and, heart mind, and mind to really not use with all my might. Might. There we so, go. <laughs> whoa, full circle moment. <laughs> <laughs> all right well that might be inspiring it might not but we're going to move on to the questions this yeah. first one is from the reddit advice column it says should i 24 year old female give flowers to my boyfriend 24 year old male to celebrate his raise at work do people even celebrate raises it was a fair amount and it was because of his hard work so i really want to congratulate him and i've been wanting to give him flowers for a while I don't know if that's weird though, and people don't do that for raises. It's that laughing face with a little drop of sweat. Should I do it, or is it just too weird? He totally won't be embarrassed by that at all. <laughs> so I think you were gonna wanna step it up and also send with that, you know, one of those singing telegram people who are dressed in the bunny suit or something. Oh. Or the man in the diaper with the little cherry bane, like bow and arrow. Do that. Oh, I Don't like stop that. at flowers. I like, yeah, I know. I, I know she's thinking is flowers enough. No, it's not enough. It's not enough. Go farther. Flowers die. You want that memory to burn in their brains forever. I love it. Why don't you just show up at his work, throw rocks at his window, and hold up the stereo and be like, congrats on your raise. With the mariachi band behind you. Beautiful. If you have a DJ there to play a song for him to come down to, that would be even better. Even better. Maybe some heavy metal. I don't know. Heavy but... metal. <laughs> yeah. Marilyn Manson. Like do something like that. That people will remember and also be a little scared of. Be, yeah, that People will be like, okay, I don't want to fuck with him because his girlfriend will. Um... Don't stop until HR gets involved. Please don't. Because it's not a real gesture of love. You don't mean it. Until HR. You're not really using You're the capability serious. of your heart or mind <laughs> in yeah. that case. Have you ever given so, your boyfriend flowers? No. Do you, you don't intend to? I don't intend to. I mean, a mariachi band is starting to sound good, though. If I, I would was like going to do something like, like that, that, it would be like a cookie bouquet or something that would come home. So then I could also enjoy it. Oh, nice. You could partake yeah. in the cookies. I probably wouldn't even send it to work. I'd send it straight to the house. Like, look at what you got today. <laughs> there are bite marks in every single cookie. That's how I would do it. That's, that's their shtick. They do little bite mark cookies. Quality control is really serious. Very important. Oh, man. Don't worry about that. That's what I would do. That's a great idea. Yeah, I'm going to have to get something out of it. Because you can't go wrong with food. Flowers will, well, I don't know if the guy, if I got flowers, I don't know if I'd leave them at my desk. I'd probably try and take them home. Have you? You've never gotten flowers from I've a female? I've never gotten flowers from I a female. I wonder who had, like, how, I, I would like to know what guys think about that. Because I'm sure there have been guys. Yeah. Women are starting to propose to men these days. Really? Yes. Okay. Me. Mm. I mean, I'm not, that shouldn't be that surprising, actually. Yeah. So if women are doing that, they're getting down on one knee and presenting a ring. I'm sure they've also given flowers. 
Where hmm. are those gentlemen? I'd like to hear their story. I would too. Fans, if you are a gentleman that has received flowers, it almost sounds like a like a lawyer. Call 188-Learner and Row and we will take care of your settlement. You but, or someone you know has been traumatized <laughs> by getting flowers in the workplace. We will sue the shit out of your girlfriend. Don't worry. Well, first tell us the story so we can see if we can roast you. Yes, exactly. And and, and we'll, what you felt about it. And then did, we'll represent you. Did your heart blossom from this gift or did it wilt? Did you have to put the pedal to the metal and leave the girlfriend? Or the, did the bus driver have to put the pedal to mm -hmm. the metal on the public transportation that you mm -hmm. interfered with? Stay tuned. We'll find out on the next episode. But I think, yeah, don't give flowers. Don't give flowers. Don't Mariachi band. Mariachi band. Beautiful. 100%. Right. Well, I do have a new segment since mm -hmm. we've last met. This one is called Positive Spin. Okay. And what it is, yes, I'll give you a bad scenario. And uh, you will have to think of some positives for it because a lot of the times when people, bad things happen, they think of the negatives and they're not able to overcome it. So this is training our mind to think of the positives. I feel like I'm going to be good at this one because this is my life. Okay. So yeah. here's the negative scenario. You just gave your boyfriend flowers. No, it's uh, you do Ancestry.com. Have you done Ancestry.com? No. Okay. Do you intend to do Ancestry.com? I don't. I hear that that's like... Big Brother stores your information. Is that a little conspiracy theorist just right there? I don't oh, know. Oh, no. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I do. It's very unpopular opinion, but I love a good conspiracy theory. So, I uh, yeah, I hear that like you do that and then they have your DNA that they can then use. I've, I've learned this information on TikTok, so it's science as well. <laughs> <laughs> I have credible sources on uh, the... Uh... It's the TikTok. On the TikTok. Yeah. Go ahead with your go ahead with your scenario. That's amazing. So you do Ancestry.com and you find out that you were actually born in what's a country that you really like? That are a country that I really like. Or have really wanted to visit. Mm, like anywhere in Europe, really. Paris. France, okay. Yeah, okay. Paris, France. Yeah. So it's not there. It's Nicaragua. Shoot. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, so then the government finds out. And then you end up getting deported and you have to live in Nicaragua. Nicaragua. It has to be Nicaragua. It had. Well, do you have a, what are your other choices? I don't know. Okay. Not France. It's not going to be France. It's not going to be that cool. Cause that would be, you, you could find some positives pretty easy. There. Yeah. All the bread. The oh. Wine. Oh my God. I remember I studied abroad in Italy and we took a little trip to France and the bread was phenomenal it had little chunks of meat and cheese in it oh, god. it was just mm, my god it was amazing yeah oh it was like mamma mia <laughs> Sacre <laughs> bleu. it's a so good de bread <laughs> so it's <the> bread. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it was another Nicaragua. world over there yeah i don't even know technically it's i know it's in central america somewhere but i don't know exactly where it is but you're gonna you're gonna live there so do you How's your Spanish? I'm assuming they speak Spanish over there. Muy bad. <laughs> muy bad. <laughs> muy, muy bad. So maybe you'll get to learn Spanish. Immersion. It'll Immersion. be like... Uh... I mean, the food's going to be good, right? Like, I always get excited about food and drinks. That's a good call. I don't know any classic Nicaraguan dishes, but I think it's... Oh, no. I, what I'm about to say is probably very offensive. I was going to say, I think it's a broad brushstroke of culinary um plates across central america but i think that's probably wrong i wish i just knew a little bit about nicaragua me too i think i chose a bad country for this example <laughs> what about mexico mexico Go to mexico not that would not suck i could totally turn that into a positive there's a lot nice. of beautiful beach towns in mexico and i look at people all the time True. who americans who go retire there and just live their best lives and uh, you know, with the money that they have now can live very well in Mexico. If I get to take my money with me. Yes, you do. Okay. I'm going to adopt all the beach dogs running around. We're just going to. That's a lot of dogs. It's fine. It's a lot of dogs. That'd be so fun. I mean, there are a lot of dogs. So, I mean, if you did, you'd never go hungry. At least. <gasps> no, no, I'm not going to eat them. <laughs> no. All the mites. Oh, the mites. Yeah. Oh, the mites. I mean, gosh. we can hang on the beach all day, though. I think that'd be cool. I could totally, that would be at any beach town. If there's ocean nearby, we can spin that into a positive. No problem. 
that's that's pretty great it just makes me miss the beach i feel like the one thing about it is one of the things about arizona that i don't like is there's no beach we're so close but there's none yes but here you want me to turn this into a positive oh please this You're is on what a i roll. tell people about arizona all the time because i'm originally from southern california and i was okay. i grew up at the beach i was always at the beach I'm, oh okay. a bar at the beach the bungalow was in huntington beach nice. um love it love it but there's a lot of earthquakes in california i don't miss that the traffic the expense of living there it's very congested all that right mm -hmm. but I do, I do love the beach i love the culture i love the museums whatever okay when we're here in arizona we are a car right away from the beach in southern california from the beach in mexico we are a car right away to the mountains to the snow we are just a car right away from like las vegas so many cool spots that people have to travel all over from to get to we could hop in the car and be there in the same afternoon and we don't have any natural disasters here we deal with a few months of the extreme heat do we not yeah but the yes. rest of the year is gorgeous that is we, we're not shoveling snow that is true. There's no hurricanes or earthquakes. We deal with a haboob every once in a while during monsoon season, which is a fun word to say. So I don't hate having them. Absolutely great. Yeah, yeah it's a good word. It's a fun one. I it love Arizona. And it, you know what? That is very true. That there are a lot of positives that you just pulled from that. It's, I don't want too many people to know that because everyone from California is coming here right the now. The secret is out. The I mean, out, Jesus, though. there are yeah. so many Californians here, which yeah. is, I mean, I'm fine with it. But well... <laughs> I'm fine with it with the way my house is raising in price. Right now, yeah, it's doing very well. But then when I'm ready, because I don't know if I want to stay here forever. I might want to upgrade, get a nicer house, maybe a little bigger, maybe a pool, because you know the summers are excruciatingly hot. Yep. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to afford that house in 10 years, because it's going to be... You're going to pull equity out of this one and put your pool in your yard right here. <laughs> Ooh, cool. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> another positive. There Boom. you go. I'm oh on, give God. me another one. No, oh, I love man. it here. I love it here. But if you see another bumper sticker that's like, I need a dollar for every time I see Don't California by Arizona. I see that's like a popular bumper sticker right now. <laughs> Don't California. Oh, my God. Whatever. I'm from California, so I can't hate on it. But I the one thing that slightly irritates me is the folks that move over here from California and then brag about how cool California is. Like, I, see what you did? You were like, I'm from Southern California. Here are the pros. Here are the cons. Here's what's great about here. Awesome. A very welcome guest you are. Thank you. But then these Californians, they come in, they're like, brah, the weed is so much better. The beaches. The uh, the, the babes. The, like, every, and I'm like, beaches dude. Beaches and babes. Go back to California. Uh, and they're like, well, I mean, I can't afford it. Can't so. afford it. Yeah, so yeah, they're here. You were living in a tent on Venice Beach. That's why you're here now. <laughs> yeah. That's what you sold your tent for. You could buy a house out here for you. <laughs> and real estate's a joke. It's a joke. Like I have friends who live in Long Beach, and yeah. they have, it might be a one bedroom or a studio, and they pay way more for that little tiny Dang. space than I pay for my mortgage every month with, you know, multiple bedrooms and a yard and a garage and. Like God it's crazy. Damn. They don't even have a garage. They don't even have, it's like luck of a draw if you find a parking spot that night somewhere along the street. Oh, I oh I, parking I, is a nightmare. Whenever I, we go, I find a spot and I don't move it until we leave. I take a lift everywhere. Oh, that's so smart. It's a nightmare. That's it's so stressful to me. I it reminds me of the horrific memories when I lived in New Jersey. And we oh, yeah. I remember we were in a little spot. That fortunately, our apartment came with a parking spot. So we had one car that we yeah, shared because we would take the train to go into the city. But um, we and we paid a thousand dollars for rent in a one bedroom apartment that I, you look on the crime map within a five mile radius and it looks like it has chicken pox because there are so many red dots from all these yeah. stabbings that have happened. People are very stabby in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Very it stabby. is very stabby. Why do you think that is? Uh, it might be the mites. They're just right. itching for a stab. Is it the I think. weather? There, it could be the weather. It just could be, it's like overall dirty there. It's just not pleasant. Not pleasant. It's not very pleasant. And everyone's in a hurry. They got to go somewhere. Yeah. So let's do another stabbing, I guess, to get more. They got stabbings to get to. Got lots chop, of stabbings. Chop. Like, yeah. Oh, Things to uh, do. sorry. I clocked in for a stabbing at 12. So time um, for a shanking. Time for a shanking. Oh, that almost sounds posh. Almost. Yeah. But I love it. Okay. Well, 
You passed. Thank you. And I knew I'd be good at that one. A thousand points yeah, for you. Thank you. You are a good positive thinker. Thank you very much. Are you an optimist? I try to be. I'm I'm a big law of attraction person. Okay. You know the law of attraction, what that like what you think about, you, you like manifesting and what, mm, yes. what you put out, you get back kind of a thing. Has that worked? It's it has absolutely worked. Okay. Yeah, I've got a ton of stories about that. How do you how does one start with the manifest so i'll tell you how i started i don't Please, know how everybody I, does I, I i am so skeptical about it i feel like if i i don't know go ahead sorry yeah no i was too um so i don't even know what year it was it was so many years ago okay. when oprah had her show i remember nice. there was a lady on who had written a book called the secret do you remember hearing about the secret <sighs> it was a very long time ago i never read the book it sounds very familiar Eventually, at some point, the book was turned into a movie. I never watched the movie. I had heard about it, and I, I understood the concept, but I never got into it. Okay. After I got a divorce, I was in my apartment, mm -hmm. and I was really struggling to make ends meet because I was a stay-at-home mom, and then yeah. got in a divorce and had no money, no job, nothing. So right after divorce, I, I was working three different jobs to make ends meet. Oh, and I wasn't even I didn't even have my own Wi-Fi like my neighbor across the way was a very sweet woman who is still my friend to this day. We've both moved on from that yeah. apartment complex, yeah. but she had Wi-Fi that she wasn't using and she I just threw her like 20 bucks a month to hop on her Wi-Fi. So oh, I didn't even that's... have my own Wi-Fi. But so I signed up for Netflix but mm -hmm. I had to use her Wi-Fi to watch it in my house. And I remember one night. I was scrolling through Netflix and I saw The Secret. And I remember thinking about, oh, I remember this. This was like so many years oh. ago. So I watched it and that movie um, is about the law of attraction. And, hmm. you know, that was like eight years ago. And honestly, that just scratches the surface about what the law of attraction is because I've since really, really gotten into it. Okay. Um, but it was enough to trigger something in me to try it. And I try. I started with little things, and eventually manifested bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, also cutting out like negative people out of my life or anyone who was vibrating at a low frequency. Because there's, mm. you know, if everything is energy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then everything at a, a, a anatomical level has a vibration. And hmm. some things vibrate low, like when people are negative or a bad situation or whatever, that's a low vibrational energy. High vibration is when you're like really positive and full of love. Love is like the highest hmm. vibration, right? So people in my life who were low vibrational complainers, mean, annoying, toxic, whatever, I slowly cut all those people out. And every time I did, something better and better and better happened. Wow. And in the law of attraction, in that movie, The Secret, they teach you to you know, visualize something happening. Think about it yeah. as if you already have it. Start with something small. Manifest someone bringing you a cup of coffee every day. Something like that. M manifest parking in the closest spot to the front. Just visualize it. Visualize an empty spot. Visualize someone bringing you a cup of coffee. And sure as shit, stuff like that started happening. And then it no feels way. a little bit like magic, right? Yeah. And then once something small happens, then all of a sudden you convince yourself that you can make bigger things happen. Oh. And I started doing that. Like I had, um, I remember thinking I'm out of perfume. I really wish I could get some more perfume. I, w I would like perfume. Yeah. Within a few hours, my coworker comes in and gives me an entire box set of her perfume that she had just bought that she didn't like. It was like a Michael Kors. It was like 150 bucks for this big, huge box set that she took one spray out of, didn't like, and she gave it to me. I'm like, I was just thinking about needing perfume. I had hey. manifested a promotion at work and then, you know, I was in that role for a while and I still was struggling with money a little bit, but things were mm -hmm. getting better. Mm -hmm. So I put a sticky note on my computer monitor of a salary I wanted to make and uh, a friend of mine knew about an opening and a position. She connected me with some people at a new company. I got, I had an interview. They offered me the job with zero experience. And that number I had written on my little sticky note, my salary didn't double, it tripled. Because I was Whoa. looking at this number every day on my computer. Like stuff like that just kept happening and happening and happening and happening. And then I created a vision board and I put a house on it. 
I own, now I own a home. Like everything on that board has happened to the point where now I have to create a new vision board and put some new stuff on it because I've manifested everything. So manifestation is real and it's just energy and anybody can do it. That, holy shit. Okay. I love it. I could go on and on and on forever. I'm super into it. Like I'm in energy. I'm a certified Reiki master. Like I'm really, really into the stuff. That's badass. Not a lot of people know that actually. I don't talk about it a ton. Oh, that's super cool. It's yeah. super interesting. And yeah. It's super cool. I am going to, you're going to have to hold me to this, you and you, whoever you are, but I'm going to try and manifest something. Do it. Start small. I'll start small. small. I'll start small. That's so cool. Okay. By the way, vision boards. What happens when do you dispose of a vision board? Once Just it's update done, update it. Oh, Some you are okay. Keep them forever. Like I have mine on a cork board. Okay. Um. So you know, I'll pull things off that have already happened and put up new stuff that I. Okay. Now I want to move to the next level, and it has to be reasonable, right? Like you can't be like, I'm going to manifest eight billion dollars. Well, okay, that's not reasonable. And also, in order for manifestation to work, you have to take action. Things don't just happen all sometimes it'll work out that way right but you have to take action and once you have action in place and you start really manifesting by in the visions that you have and the feel you have to have a it's not just a vision you have to have the feeling of what it would feel like if you already had it if you can reproduce that feeling and it's almost like a little bit of playing pretend like when you were a kid and using uh -huh. your imagination uh -huh. and sometimes it feels like a lie like we're lying to ourselves i'm not a millionaire but you have to pretend just pretend like you are just pretend like you have the money pretend like you have the car pretend like you have that and really try to feel what that would feel like and i swear to god you'll manifest it <laughs> that is so cool i heard something similar but not the same where neil gaiman famous he was a very famous author and he um he wrote a lot of books comic books and some of them that have turned into series i think was lucifer was a series that he had written i don't okay. think it was the same title but anyway he was saying sometimes this person went up to him and was like i just got this job that i have no idea how to do it and he was like pretend that you're somebody that knows how to do it not pretend to do the work like actually do the work but pretend like you know what yeah. you're doing and feel like you know what you're doing and then eventually things will fall same into place. thing that's super that's just manifesting yeah it's so wow. cool wow yeah that's... so if you don't know anything about manifesting or law of attraction i would say that that secret is a great starting point okay and once you've gotten past that there are so many more resources and if you want to know reach out to me i'll definitely point you in the right direction of good resources to follow or listen to that are really important people in this, um, you know, realm in this world. Of, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Quick question. Yeah. Not to keep you super long, but you mentioned you were also a Reiki master. Yeah. What is a Reiki master? So Reiki is energy work and our, okay. our body has chakras. You've heard of chakras. Yeah. Okay. So different energy points tied to different areas of our body, like from your crown to your third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, you know, sacral and root chakra. Those are your chakras. Okay. Um, and oftentimes when something's not going right in your life or if you're having problems, physical, emotional, whatever, there's usually some type of blockage in one of these chakras. And okay. Um, okay. Reiki is the work of realigning the chakras. And I don't even have to put my hands on you. It's just mm -hmm. done hovering over the body and these different points. Okay. And there's symbols that you kind of do with your hands that are these Reiki symbols that, you know, the teachers and the original Reiki masters have, you Is know, it... were told these symbols to use and you, you okay, you know, you put Is these that on Japanese, people. by the it way. It is. Okay. Ja okay. Mm. Reiki sounded yeah. Japanese. Okay. Um, so you can heal the body, you can heal the mind, the soul, realign and balance all your chakras. And then when you do that, you can find yourself in better health and better well being and yeah. solve problems and stuff like that that you're having. And you could do it distance. Like I could do a distance healing on someone who lives across the country. And I have many times. Like, really? Yeah. Energy is not bound by distance, it, it knows no distance, time and space. It's Quantum physics, pretty cool stuff. Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah. All right. I'm you didn't know that, that it was going to take this direction. I'm no, sorry, no. Wait, funny. I mean, we, we took a stop. At, it was like we took a stop at the beach and then now we're getting yeah. back on the bus, scratching those mics, Mites. but thinking about the wonderful time that we had. That was 
incredible. Wow. I would I love it. I'm super passionate about it. Yeah. That's it's cool stuff. Super cool. So All it right. works. I'm gonna manifest something tonight and then we'll see what happens. I gotta think of something small. Think right. something small. Start with parking spots. That's the easiest thing to manifest when okay. you're going somewhere. Before you get there, just start visualizing the spot in the front. Okay. I like that. That's really good. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, last question. Um, this one is also from the Reddit advice column. It, it. it says, would buying my boyfriend, a lot of boyfriend questions here, would buying my boyfriend bathroom items be offensive? My boyfriend recently lost his job and has been struggling. So I wanted to buy him a Kroger gift card and bathroom items like shampoo, toothpaste, et cetera. Would that be a nice gesture or does that come off offensive? Whew. It's only offensive if you buy the knockoff brand. Please buy the quality like that. that he'll never be able to reproduce because he lost his job. Oh, yeah, that's you can't right. buy the top shelf stuff and then you'll create value in you. That's like the premium toilet paper? Premium and, and gas. Not yeah. like Kirkland's signature. Although, what are your thoughts about Kirkland's signature? I feel some of the stuff is okay. If we're being real honest, <laughs> I always buy generic everything. <laughs> I do. It's Same. just as good. Same. The stuff is just as good. Same. Yeah. I'm I'm a uh, generic generic Jerry, I guess, cuz Kleenex generic uh, Kleenex Judy. is oh, generic Jerry and Judy. I love it. Um knock off Kleenex. Yeah, knock off Kleenex, these sound pads, they're not Nike. They're generic and uh I mean, I judged you a little bit. <laughs> you, I didn't see any swooshes you didn't on see any the swoosh on the sound the sound panels. What a joke! Oh, I know it is. Uh, it's embarrassing, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, Sometimes I do believe you get what you pay for with certain things, though. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but like household paper goods and things like that, I'm all about the generic. But for the advice here, definitely buy the most expensive things because then you'll create value in your worth. That he will never be able to reproduce. And you can hold power over him. And it's a, pow like, it's a power play. You're almost becoming like a sugar mama at that point. Who with toiletries. Be a sugar mama. <laughs> I mean, if we have another COVID moment and there's no toilet paper, could you imagine the value you create for yourself? Oh, my God. So buy some and keep it at your house, too, in case we run out again. Oh, wow. You'll have them keep running back to you. For you more. could have, you'd be like the, the, uh, Toilet tissue tiara princess, yeah. basically. Like a dealer. There you go. You'd run your little empire. Breaking butts, I guess. Yeah. Cause... Breaking butts. Only if you buy the one ply. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, I can't disagree think? with that. I, mean... I would say um, if I, I don't know how broke he is. He just lost his job. If he's a frivolous spender like i think you should break up with him just because you know it's when you hit rock bottom when you really start to just rebound in such a stupendous way yeah and so i think if you leave him while he's down then he's gonna wake up and start to that's even better than what i said <laughs> and break up with him via mariachi band don't even write it out on a roll of one ply <laughs> And leave it on his doorstep. So he has to unwind it. I <laughs> am leaving you. And then at least he has a one more roll of toilet paper. I love And you know what? In the roll, you can open it and then just put flowers in there. So it's almost like a little poopery. Kick him when he's down. You know what I mean? I love it. This love is amazing. Poopery. So <laughs> I love poopery. I don't know what it is. It works. What is poopery? Is I only it like... use it when I'm traveling because I don't care enough about the people who live in my house. To use it. <laughs> but when you travel with friends, it is polite. It um, It's a perfume spray that you spray in the toilet before you poop, and it creates like a seal over the water. So when you're pooping and your poop goes underneath the water, there's a seal over top of it so the room never smells like your poop. It... it creates this wrapper around your poo like a little stink burrito stink burrito so that here's the thing i do know poopery i didn't know what potpourri was but poopery i have some and i thought i was proactive about it usually my wife is the stench police so she'll be like this smells take care of it and then i'll go in and clean it but i was like you know what uh 
I, I've started to notice little stinks and I, I've, I think it was at a guest's house. I was a, a guest and I went to the bathroom and I was like, this doesn't smell great. So I want to make sure that <laughs> that doesn't happen at this house. The only problem is I forget to spray before. So I think that it spraying after will do a job, but I guess not. Damage is done. The dam okay. They do make travel size pooperies. Oh, okay. I wish I had some sort of reminder, though. I wish my Apple Watch knew when I was sitting down yeah, to take like, a stinker. Hey, bro, don't forget your poopery. Yeah. Like, yes, let me do that real fast. Ex yes, exactly. Siri, well, no. But if I could <laughs> get a reminder. Sorry, that's a very aggressive way to be like, no. No. <sighs> but, uh, that's a great idea. I don't, if you could think of a way to. Maybe there's a way that Siri can, can be able to take your pulse and like when you're ready to relax for a poo yeah, it's it like oh your heart rate. it's poo time oh she's relaxing <laughs> it's time you know what's happening next don't forget the poopery i had this idea and maybe it will come to fruition but i think that people well this is my my pitch as an agency that will work for companies and be able to place ads in front of people when they're pooping and i was going to call it data dump and I thought that it's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Like in public stalls, or are you thinking in every home? <laughs> I was thinking in every home. In there every are these home. beacons that can tell when they're taking. I, I haven't figured that part out yet. Right. I'm not no, sure. you're onto something. But when they are ready or when they're on their phone at that moment, Boom. time stood stool. And then I again, see what you did. Yeah. It didn't really. That's good. <laughs> well, you missed your calling as a, 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 a marketer, marketer. <laughs> well i do mark yeah i am a marketer but uh not in the sense not in the poo sense i guess because uh there's another pun i want to be know. a shitty marketer is yeah. what i want to be you're but doing great i'll wipe the slate clean with a two-ply oh man there's <laughs> a lot of puns happening <laughs> yeah and that's that usually is the time that we need to wrap it up but mm -hmm. ashley thank you so much oh my for gosh. joining and telling me about your life your show and the manifesting yeah. and the Reiki. This was a fascinating episode. Oh, good. So Thank you it. for having me. I love being here. And just one more time, what have you got to plug? Where can people follow you? What have oh, you got going yeah. on? Thank you. So the show is once a month at House of Comedy. That date always changes every month, so you have to check the website. It's called Not So Black and White. Um, on social media, you can find me under Ashley Rose or Ashley Rose Comedy on Instagram. Um, and that's pretty much everything. That's awesome. All, that's all the spots. And that's all that's going to be in the show notes. So people can just tap. Thank you. Or click that. whatever they're doing. Tapping or clicking. Even if it's on the potty, guys, that's double the points if you do that. I mean, I do my best internet work on the potty. I, I mean, who does it? I text just, all of the people, all my friends. Really, I'm I'm on my, the potty. Catch up on all my correspondence. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Little, you, my little cherubs. You guys are so sweet. And thank you for making it all the way through. Love you guys. Gooch smooch. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wowie. What a whop of an episode there, boys. Wow. That's a she. What an amazing episode. Uh, put the money in the bag, she. Oh, my God. See, that episode was so good. It brought me back in time and made me a mobster. Shane. So I hope you guys were able to enjoy it. And I hope you guys are able to continue the fun links are in the show notes to go see Ashley at her show. Not so black and white. The House of Comedy. Follow her on Instagram. All the socials. Give her some love. Shout her out. Shout me out. Slide in the DMs. Say, hey, Steph, loved the episode. Do that to Ashley. Do that to all of us. And you know what? Just follow me on Instagram. If you haven't already, subscribe, leave a review. Deep breath, Steph. Deep breath. Oh, remember what the mindfulness teacher said. Okay. In through the nose, out through my ears. And love you guys so much. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Gooch, smooch. Mwah.